welcome to the course business analytics and data mining modeling using R. So, in the previous lecture, uh, we were discussing dimension detection techniques and we uh, covered uh, quite a few. So, uh, today's lecture will start with the uh, automated detection techniques and the one uh, particular technique that we are going to uh, talk about that we are going to discuss is principal component analysis also called PC. So, let us start our discussion on PCA. So, uh, principal component analysis uh, is mainly uh, used uh, for reducing the number of, predict uh, number of predictors as we are uh, discussing the di dimension detection techniques uh, and uh, as we talked uh, as we discussed in the previous lectures as well that the idea being uh, reducing the dimension and uh, mainly uh, to achieve the parsimony to follow the principle of parsimony and many other regions that we have discussed before. So, the PCA role of PCA is also uh, similar uh, can be used for reducing the number of predictors hence uh, can be used to reduce the dimensions. Used for quantitative variables, so only the quantitative variables can be used under this techniques. Uh, so, for categorical variables we have to rely on other, uh, other methods that we have discussed in previous uh, lecture as well. Now, sometimes uh, when we are dealing with a large number of uh, uh, variables or a uh, big pool of predictors, uh, we might encounter a highly correlated variable subsets. So, uh, this kind of situation is not desirable in many situation uh, because uh, some of the uh, some of these variables uh, some of these uh, variables might have information overlap. So, they might be uh, measuring the same kind of uh, information, same information uh, that can uh, that can uh, disturb the model, a spurious relationship could be there and the model uh, might be useless. So, therefore, we want to get rid of uh, from these situations. So, principal component analysis PCA. Uh, can specifically help in this particular kind of scenario. Now, what is the main idea? Main idea is to find a set of new variables that contains most of the information of original variables. So, we do not want to, uh, to lose out on the uh, information because we want to have we want to retain the explanatory part of explanatory uh, power of the model uh, which we could have had. Uh, using original variables. So, with new set of variables also we would like to retain most of the information and hence most of the explanatory power from the model of the model. While uh, idea is to find new set of variables, uh, the uh, point to be noted here is we are trying to reduce the dimensions. Therefore, these uh, set of new variables are going to be less than the number of variables, number of original variables. Few other objectives could be eliminating covariation and multicollinearity. So, uh, in any information overlap between uh, two variables, uh, it could also be called covariation. Now, uh, sometimes in regression modeling, especially we might encounter this problem multicollinearity. So, in regression uh, models as we will discuss in coming lectures uh, that uh, this uh, uh, covariation is not desirable and therefore, that leads to a multicollinearity that we will discuss uh, in the regression uh, related uh, lectures, but through PCA this can also be eliminated. So, eliminating covariation and multicollinearity could be another objective. Now, essentially while we are looking for a new set of variables uh, which is able to uh, which are a few in uh, which are less than uh, number of original variables thereby reducing the dimensions while we are and also at the same time we are trying to retain the explanatory power of the uh, all the variables put together uh, therefore, the model uh, we need to redistribute uh, the variability. So, the how the when we are looking for new set of variables, we are essentially redistributing the variability uh, that is uh, contained by the original set of variables, right. So, uh, let us uh, go through an exercise using R. So, let us open R studio. So, we will go back to go reach to the uh, section where we start our discussion on principal component analysis.
Yes. So uh, let's uh, import this program data set uh, breakfast serials data set. Let's import this. We will also discuss uh, this data set and how it could be, how it is going to be utilized for our exercises. So you can see 35 observation of 18, 18 variables. Uh, let's open the uh, this particular data set. We will try to open here in the R environment itself. You can see uh, the first uh, particular variable that we can see is brand name and uh, you can see few brand names here and then the product name and then uh, specific details about these products, uh, the kind of packaging. So this is uh, where it is depending on the packaging and the price is uh, uh, the corresponding price and the energy and other uh, contents or ingredients uh, that are there in that particular cereal. So all those details starting from uh, protein, carbohydrate, sugar, fiber, fat, so all those details you can see in this particular data set. At the end of it, last column after iron uh, related information you would see that uh, customer rating is also there. So how customers have been rating these uh, particular cereals. So now uh, all this uh, uh, data is based on the uh, different uh, cereal packets that are being sold in Indian markets and so uh, we have selected few of them and also taken uh, the uh, different details about these cereals. So we are going to use this particular data set for our principal component analysis. So let us uh, eliminate the uh, you know if there are any uh, any columns, columns having any values and then let us have a look at the uh, 20 rows of data. So the same thing that we did using uh, uh, opening this file in the R environment, same thing we can do through this particular command. You can see in this particular data frame that weight for different uh, the, the package, uh, the details uh, uh, which have been taken from different packages are carrying different weights. So therefore, it is important for us to have because we are going to compare these serials right later on through a principal component analysis essentially. Uh, so these uh, uh, these uh, serials are going to be compared. So therefore, we need to uh, uh, we need to get the details like price, energy and other uh, details like protein, carbohydrate, sugar etc. Uh, for the same weight uh, for the same packaging for the same weight of that particular serials. So let us look at the structure of this particular data frame. You would see except the brand name and product name all the variables are numerical in nature. Let us take a backup of this uh, full data set. Now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to apply this particular function this we have written uh, function this so we are going to divide all the details starting from uh, the uh, price uh, energy protein with the weight so that we get the uh, details uh, uh, for, uh, details for all the serials for similar weight or similar uh, packaging uh, so 100 so it's for 100 grams so you can see we, all the these details are going to be now available per 100 grams so let's uh, execute this so this particular line, so we will get a new data frame and uh, now once this is done, uh, we had earlier uh, uh, eliminate, we have earlier not included customer rating in, in the earlier line. So let us uh, combine this one as well, customer rating and let us look at the first 6 observations now, you would see that details uh, specific numbers have changed. Now all these numbers are for all these numbers are for e each serial and for 100 grams of uh, each each one. So now, now we can uh, move ahead. So uh, let us sele select uh, two important uh, uh, variables out of this data set energy and customer rating 
and let us do our P, uh, run let us apply our PCA on these two variables and then we will proceed further. So, uh, let us focus on energy and customer rating. So, these are first six observation for energy and customer rating. Now, uh, what we are going to do is we will uh, plot a, uh, a graph between energy and customer rating. Let us look at the range. You can see 12.8 to, to uh, 350 for energy. This is uh, kilo calorie uh, and then the customer rating is there. This is percentage uh, customer rating between 0 to 100. So, uh, appropriately the uh, limits x and limit and y limits have been specified. So, let us plot this graph. So, this is the scatter plot that we get. If you look at this scatter plot, some of the observation you can see these observations, these seem to be way out of the major chunk of the values. So, we will consider them uh, as outliers for our exercise and we will try and eliminate them. So, that we would end up dealing with only uh, this particular chunk of uh, points. So, uh, let us find out these outliers. So, most of them looked like having energy value of greater than 300. So, let us identify these points. Uh, you can see point case number observation number 32, 33 and 34. Uh, uh, so, these are the points and you can see the energy values are in excess of 300 kilo calorie. So, probably these uh, cereals are having high energy uh, content, high energy value. So, we will not include them. So, we will uh, uh, only analyze the cereals having a closure by energy value range. So, let us eliminate these uh, three points from our data frame and uh, we are going to plot again. So, now uh, we will we get a much uh, closure plot uh, rating versus energy. So, all these points we can now visualize. So, from this if you look at the points. So, uh, most of the points uh, if we uh, try to uh, draw a line which can go from here to here, uh, it is uh, look like uh, you know uh, as the energy as the energy increases uh, for a particular serial for different serials as the energy increases energy value increases you can see the rating that is slightly that is uh, coming down which is expected. So, uh, variability in terms of variability also we can see uh, uh, most of the variability can be captured uh, by the rating and energy itself because uh, they are uh, quite aligned to the x axis and y axis. So, let us look at the mean values of these two variables energy and the uh, customer rating. So, these are the mean values. So, mean values representing as we have talked about uh, in previous lectures also the centralized value of a particular variables and gives us a sense of the uh, you know mean value uh, average values from where other values also other values might be uh, lying around that value. So, it gives us a, uh, a central value representing value in a way representing value of that particular variable. So, let us uh, look at the uh, covariance matrix uh, of this these two uh, you know variables. So, let us compute the variance of energy variable then followed by the variance of customer rating. Let us also compute their covariance. So, th this is the matrix. So, why we are computing all this information is because essentially as we talked about uh, the uh, if these are the original two variables energy and customer rating and we are going to apply uh, principal component component analysis on these two variables essentially we would be redistributing the variability because we want to retain the uh, much of the information right while we are trying to uh, find a uh, set of variables which is uh, fewer than the original number of variables. So, uh, we are trying to have a look at the variability. If you are interested in finding the correlation between these two, so you can see uh, these two variables the correlation coefficient seems to be uh, minus 0.45 right. So, now again uh, let us come back to the variability. So, let us uh, see the total variability uh, with, uh, in the original variables energy and customer rating that is 1804.333. 
let us see the contribution of energy, uh, the variability that is uh, contrib contributed by energy variable is uh, 87 percent and the, uh, the variability coming from a uh, rating is 12 percent. So, you would see if we go back to the plot, if we go back to the plot, then you would see that uh, it is the along the x axis that is uh, being represented by energy, most of the variability is being captured. You can see from uh, values starting from 20 to values starting from 140 and most of the variability can be captured along this dimension. Now, some variability is also in the perpendicular orthogonal uh, direction which is being represented by y axis and rating. So, some uh, variability is also being uh, captured by contributed by rating. So, now uh, uh, as if the data of uh, energy and uh, rating as it looks like uh, uh, the most of the uh, variability uh, contribution is coming from energy. So, uh, we can actually uh, get rid of rating variable and use the energy because 87 percent of the information is anyway will be able to retain, retain and uh, we will uh, get rid of a one per dimension that is rating. So, is there a better way can we increase can we retain much more information. Uh, so, that can be seen through uh, principal component analysis. So, let us apply principal component analysis of uh, on of energy and rating. So, first let us select the these two variables in a new data frame d of p c a. Let us apply this function. So, the p r comp is the function uh, that is actually used to apply principal component analysis in R. If you are interested in finding more about this particular function, uh, you can go into the help section and find out. You can see principal component analysis description, you can see performs a principal component, component analysis on the given data matrix. right? So, we are going to use this particular function and uh, let us run this code. So, uh, this has been run. Now, now uh, many things have been computed as part of uh, as we called this function. Now, uh, let us look at the uh, new PC directions. So, uh, let us uh, find out. Let us look at the details of this uh, mod function. You can see different details have been computed by PR comp function. And uh, if you are interested in the uh, finding out the summary of it, you can see two principal components have been computed. A standard deviation for uh, first one is P C 1 for 40 and for P C 2 is 12.99. If you look at the proportion of variance, so P C 1 is, is uh, contributing uh, uh, explaining 90 percent of the variance and uh, remaining 9 percent, 9.36 per, uh, percent variance variability is uh, contributed by second principal component. So, you can see from uh, the numbers earlier numbers from 87 and 12, we have redistributed this particular variability to 90 and uh, 9. So, uh, this is uh, a small change, but in uh, other scenarios, uh, if we apply principal component analysis to other data sets or to other variables, then the situation could be different. It could be from 60, 40 to uh, 80, 20 or 90, 10 kind of redistribution. So, it depends on the particular variables. So, in this particular case, uh, the redistribution of variability is happening from 87 and uh, 13 to 90 and 10. Now, uh, uh, let us analyze further. So, because now uh, we will have uh, two new uh, dimensions uh, determined by these two uh, principal components P C 1, P C 2. So, what we will do, uh, we will add them to our uh, scatter plot which was earlier generated. So, uh, first we need to compute the uh, uh, this uh, slope and intercept to find out the uh, directions. So, adding PC directions to the plot, uh, you would see that uh, that the uh, rotation is uh, uh, one particular out one particular return value that we have in the in the mod in the mod function in the mod variable. Right. So, we are going to use this particular uh, this particular rotation value. So, these are nothing but weights. If you are interested in uh, interested in looking at the uh, rotation value, you can check weights for new dimensions Z1 and Z2. So, these are the weights. So, P C 1 and P C 2 you can see the weights. So, these if we, if we want to compute these scores 
uh, for uh, for new uh, this uh, direction P C 1, uh, we can use these two weights uh, 1 corresponding to energy minus 0.98, then other one corresponding to customer rating 0.18. Similarly, for P C 2, it is just the reverse. So, using these weights, we can com compute the new scores uh, for these new dimensions. So, earlier uh, we had scores for energy and uh, customer rating now. Uh, so, scores are also pre computed uh, by the PR com, uh, com function and returned in this particular uh, variable uh, x. So, let us uh, look at the first 6 values. So, these are the pre computed scores. If you want to see how these scores can be computed, so we can take one example. So, let us compute first score. So, DF uh, PCA 1, let us look at the uh, very first value. So, the energy and customer rating values were 70 and 84 uh, for the first variable. If we look at the after applying the PR comp or PCA, uh, the weights are here. So, uh, we can uh, do, uh, we can compute the first score in this fashion. So, these are uh, this is the particular weight that we saw in the earlier table. Uh, this is uh, this particular value minus 0.98. So, mod dollar rotation 1 1. So, this is re representing that particular weight and then we are subtracting the DF uh, PCA 1 1 uh, by the mean uh, by the mean value. So, uh, uh, the value that we had 1 1 is 70.1 right. So, uh, now we are also subtracting it by, by mean. Similarly, for second uh, weight uh, that is corresponding to customer rating that is my, uh, 0.1835. So, this is uh, here. Uh, so, now uh, the second value, uh, the rating value TFPCA12 is uh, this one 84. Now, this is being subtracted by uh, the mean value of that uh, mean value of customer rating and then we are. Uh, weighing it through this weight that we have just computed. So, let us compute this value. You would see that value minus 1.38 has been computed and this is for first score and for first direction you can see in the results the same value was there. You can see minus 1.38 the same value was there. This is, this is how we can compute the scores using the weights of new dimensions. So, now uh, let us uh, plot at the directions. So, uh, let us find out the slope. So, this is uh, nothing but uh, rotation, this is uh, a y value and this is the x value and uh, we are going to use the width uh, is one particular function that can be used uh, to do some uh, computations uh, in a particular environment. So, the environment in this is determined by the first argument that is uh, mod in this case. So, that we do not have to use uh, different notation like mod dollar rotation or mod dollar center etcetera. We can uh, in the first argument we can specify the, uh, the, uh, the environment that is the data and then we can specifically access the variables and do our computation. So, the same thing we are doing this is like y divided by x in this case these weights and this will give us slope. Similarly, intercept can be find, found out using this. If you are interested in looking at the uh, uh, new center, new center that can be look, looked at. Uh, so, this, these, this is the value 67.47 and 77.5. So, if we go back to the scatter plot and let us zoom uh, this particular plot. So, the new center is going to be at 67.47 and 77.5. So, somewhere 67.47 and 77.5. So, somewhere here. So, new center is going to be here. Now, using this uh, particular new center, we are trying to compute the intercept. So, slope we have already computed, right. Uh, so, let us compute intercept. Once this is done, we can add this line. So, this a b line is the function that can draw a line given the intercept and slope. So, let us plot this line. You can see a line has been plotted. So, this is p c 1. So, you can see uh, if we compare it to the, uh, the original x axis that is represented by energy. So, there is some angle. So, uh, now this particular through this uh, line 
even more variability is being captured that is why we saw a jump from 87 to 90. So, the earlier variability for uh, captured by energy would have would was 87 which would be represented by a line like this a, 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 a line parallel to x axis uh, horizontal line. Now, this is slightly uh, some slope is there. So, this is capturing even more variability. So, that is why we saw a jump from 87 to 90. So, let us plot uh, the second uh, direction. So, because uh, these two are going to be perpendicular orthog orthogonal, so we can compute the slope in this fashion also. Uh, uh, slope 1, uh, slope 1 now this new slope can be minus 1 divided by the slope or the PC1 or the other way also uh, the rotation values uh, can also be used to compute the slope. So, let us compute this. We can also find out the intercept for this particular line and we can add this line into the plot. So, we would see the PC2 has been added. So, these are the two lines. Now, this is uh, now this is the redistribution of variability. So, earlier we had x axis and y axis represented by energy and rating. Now, we have PC1 and PC2. Uh, so, the redistribution is variability of, of variability is happening. Now, earlier it was 87 and uh, you know th kind of 13 uh, by these two axis. Now, we have a 90 and uh, 10 scenario. So, say same thing uh, we can see here now uh, the new uh, Vz1 value, Vz2 value we can find out the total variability. If you look at the total variability is uh, 18, 1804 and if you go back and look at the earlier total variability that we have computed as V1 plus V2 both are same. So, you can see variability is same. Uh, the redistribution has happened because of the change in the directions of uh, dimension. So, now a contribution by energy and rating you can see 90 and uh, 90.6 and 9.36. Now, uh, principal component analysis uh, uh, can now can be applied to all numerical variables that we have in the data set. So, uh, let us have a look at the data set that we had. So, this is the data set that we saw earlier. So, uh, till now we applied the principal component analysis on just two variables energy and rating. So, now we can apply it on all numerical variables, right. So, in this particular data set, the variables that we have are all numerical, right, except uh, two variables. Uh, this uh, trans fatty acids and cholesterol. So, most of the values in, in, in these two variables are 0. So, therefore, we would not be uh, we would not be including them in this particular analysis. So, we would be eliminate them and other variables would be taken as uh, for the principal component analysis. So, uh, we will stop here and uh, we will apply principal component analysis on all the variables that are in the data set in the back structure. Thank you.